Run it up, to run it back. Yeah. Run it up, to run it back. Run it up, to run it back. Good it morning and back. welcome yeah. to season ending edition of Run It Back here on FanDuel TV. Uh, what's going on? Shams is wearing a hoodie. So we all just need to take one minute yeah. and recognize that. How do you feel, sir? I feel good. You know, I did it only for us. I did it for Run It Back. I did it for <laughs> FanDuel TV. I wouldn't do it for any other people other than you three. So and that's as well what as Jason I like to hear. And Lisa and Conrad. So you guys <laughs> are the only people that would get me to wear a hoodie. I've never, I've de I didn't think we'd see the day and uh, and here we are. So yes, Sham Sharani is here, Chandler Parsons, Lou Will. And guys, we thought maybe we'd be coming on here on Monday and just, you know, talking about a sweep and how the season looked and what we look forward to next season. And bam, Dallas Mavericks got some pride. 122-84 win. It's a 38-point margin there if you want to do the math. Uh, third biggest ever in an NBA Finals game. Luka, 29. Kyrie, 21. Tatum and Brown combining for 25. They were 7-22 from the field. Um, we all know about the Luka criticism. We were part of the Luka criticism after Game 3. Chandler, his Game 4 performance, did it do anything for you? Yeah, I mean, they they played very, very well. And this game was over before it even started, it felt like. And, and this is how they have to play for them to have any chance at coming back. And everybody wrote them off. I think everybody is still writing them off. It's a tall task to go into Boston tonight when somehow get the momentum back to you, handle business and get at home, and then go back to game seven uh, in Boston. So, listen, I think he has been pretty good all series long. He's made some mistakes. He's turned the ball over. I think it's been overshadowed by the, you know, him fouling out in game three, him uh, complaining with the refs, but as in, he's been a little bit inefficient, but he's still doing what he does. He's still putting up great Luka Doncic numbers. It's just, he hasn't got that supporting cast. He's turned the ball over a little bit. He's made some big time errors that have costed them, but and, and and other than that, Kyrie has not been the same Kyrie in the first couple of series. They haven't got the same production from their from their other guys that everybody was saying they have to be the X factor. So listen, this was a great game. I, I'm glad they didn't just lay down and get swept and pack their bags and head to vacation. They still think there's still a chance. They still think they're still hoping. They are confident in tonight going into Boston. They think they can win this game. This series isn't over. So Luca was great. Did he prove he's the best player in the series? He's down 3-1, so it's hard to say that right now. Talent-wise, resume-wise, yeah, sure, he's the best, but he's got to go and do it three more times for to be the best player in the finals. What do you think, Lou? Should we have hope? I mean, yeah, there's hope. Um, game four was was a was a great indicator that this team got pride and that they want to continue on with this series and give themselves an opportunity to get back home and, and try to get this thing to 3-3. You know, tonight is going to be a tall task. It's damn near mission impossible going into Boston trying to beat this team. I don't know the last time I've seen this Boston Celtics team lose two games in a row um, in a regular season or the postseason, you know. And so for them to have an opportunity, they, they got to play like they just did. They got the other guys involved. Lively was a major part of what they were doing. Give uh, Derrick Jones some credit what he was able to bring on a defensive end. And they just got a good win at home. And Luka Doncic was a big part of that and how he responded to the criticism. I still think Kyrie Irving has a has a, a major game left in his bag. And they're going to need it tonight. You know, I think when you run into desperate teams, you run into uh, some of the best basketball that you're going to experience. And I thought the Boston Celtics ran into that down in Dallas. But I think they'll respond back tonight. Yeah, it feels like the inevitable is here. But I don't know, Shams, maybe we'll be shocked. Uh, your biggest storyline for uh, for going into tonight's game for the Mavs. Yeah, I was there at, at game four, and I just saw the way Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving came out and played. Like, they won that game for them, just the energy that they brought. And you, you saw Luka Doncic. I think he took what happened in game three. He took the slights that came with it, and he brought a different level of aggression, especially on defense. There were clips going around of the way he played defensively and I think that's going to be the biggest key if they can carry it over but they showed that they can win at least one game here for the Mavs together you think about it, 50 points 11 assists uh, nine uh, rebounds only two turnovers 22 of 44 from the field between those two guys so they're going to need them to play the exact same way and also Kyrie Irving uh, being able to step up in Boston he has not had that level of success so far in Boston and so seeing how he comes out of the gates early will be interesting in Boston. Look, there was a press conference yesterday because media is every day during the finals. Uh, and Kyrie was asked about his time in Boston. So let's listen together and then we'll react. 
You have to show your respects here. And I think that's what I struggled with initially was figuring out how I'm going to be a great player here while winning championships, while also leading a team and uh, selflessly joining uh, the Celtics organization or the cult that they have here. Um, you know, and that's what they expect you to do as as a player. They expect you to seamlessly buy into the Celtics pride, buy into everything Celtics. And if you don't, then you'll be outed. And uh, I'm one of the people that's on the outs. <laughs> so I am fine with his comments, but I also can put myself in the mindset of psycho fans uh, who immediately probably got defensive on that one when he mm. said cult. So Chandler, what, would you have said what he said? Maybe not say it. Where are we on these statements? I like to say what I want to say every now and then. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with these comments. And when you have a legacy and a tradition like the Boston Celtics, there are some die-hard fans, some die-hard people that take it very seriously. So you have to have that respect when you play for an organization, uh, an organization like the Boston Celtics. And forever that went wrong with Kyrie Irving. It didn't work out, and that is okay. This happens all the time with players and franchises. It's funny that we still talk about this. Kyrie's moved on. He's happy. Boston's moved on. They're happy. They're in the finals. So it's funny that it's such a topic of conversation when this happens all the time. But, yeah, when you start talking about the tradition of an organization, you start calling them, you know, culty, I can see how some people will take that and run with it. But I got no problem with his comments here. I think this is just a, a – a, a bad situation that didn't work out. I'm sure he's got some great relationships there with some staff and some front office people. I'm sure he's got some great, uh, some bad relationships with guys they didn't get along with there and it didn't work out. But uh, this is just kind of a dirty breakup that we keep bringing back, even though both people have moved on and are happier than ever right now. So I, I don't think this is a big deal, but there's definitely going to be some fans that kind of take this the wrong way. Yeah. I mean, it's the word cult, Lou. It, yeah. it, people don't love yeah. it, even if they're in one. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think people, I think people are going to pick it apart. Um, you know, cult, short for culture. Yeah, a, a lot of legendary and traditional sports teams around the world, whether it's the Lakers, the Boston Celtics, the Red Sox, the Yankees, yeah, I, like I can go on that. and on. These, these, these are legendary teams that has traditions. They have culture that they've built. They carry themselves a certain way. Their fans cheer a certain way. You, you understand what you're going to expect. You know, the Philadelphia Phillies and the Sixers and all of these teams, they've created an identity as a fan base. And I think that was the that was the message that he was trying to get across. And the Boston Celtics are no different. Sure, the word code is going to be a word that's going to trigger some people and everybody's going to put together these deep think pieces on what he was <laughs> saying because he used the word code. But to me, he was just talking about the culture that they have there. And he's a, he recognizes that he's a guy on the outside of that culture and he didn't fit into it. You know, not a big deal to me here. Yeah, just by the way, heads up, Celtics fans, you are a cult. Boston fans, Philly fans, New York, it's all a cult. We're all in a cult <laughs> if we're fans of a team, especially if you're a little bit of the sort of overzealous variety of fans. So chill out. Um, I don't think he meant you were like – Kevorkian style, but that's all right. Uh, <laughs> Luca and Kyrie, one for 14 from three in game four, which is crazy when you still look at that score, what it ended up being. But 25% overall in the series from the three. I don't know what the Celtics are coming into mindset-wise here tonight, Lou. I'll start with you. But is there a concern, do you think, somewhere in the backs of their minds that they still have it in them to get hot from three? I don't think that's a concern because I don't think Dallas is, they're going to shoot as many threes as the Boston Celtics like to shoot. You know, this is a, the Boston Celtics are a team, they took 10 three-pointers in the first quarter in game two, and that was able to give them a lead. This is a team that lives and dies by the three-point line. For you to compete against them, you got to use the three-point line um, just as much. And I don't think Dallas is going to be one of those teams that's just going to continue to shoot threes, continue to shoot threes. They got two of the best guys in the business that are known for attacking the basket, that are known for getting point paints, trying to get as much as they can done inside of the three-point line. Obviously, both of those guys are willing three-point shooters. I don't see any concern with them really, really struggling at, at the three-point line because that's not really been their identity. As you see on the clips here, Kyrie is in the lane. Uh, Luka's in the lane. This is where these guys are really, really special. I think what they do on a, on, on the three-point line, that's an added win for the for the Dallas Mavericks. So I don't I don't see this as a concern that they're struggling from the line now. They can get hot just like any other team can get hot. But I think the Boston Celtics are still going to shoot more and still going to shoot a higher percentage based on how that team is built and the way they like to play basketball. 
Yeah, I think, listen, when you're talking about Dallas Mavericks, their offense has been so potent all year long. It obviously starts with these two guys, what they can create. Now they've ran into this kind of mismatch nightmare where Boston Celtics have guys that can keep them in front. They can kind of stop the dribble penetration, which has been allowing all season long the op wide open swing, swing threes in this Dallas Mavericks offense. So it'll be interesting to see because this is a team that struggled. They've been inefficient in the finals so far, but they can definitely get hot. They have the talent. You see, we've been talking about Tim Hardaway Jr., all oh, postseason, he finally goes and hits five threes in one quarter. So I'll be interested <laughs> to see how many minutes he get. Uh, he gets tonight. Jaden Hardy, his minutes has been up and down. He's a guy that can go and score. And this is a team that needs offense. They need that explosive scoring guy to come in and have a big game. We know what we're going to get from Luka. I'd love to see Kyrie Irving kind of be efficient tonight and have a big game in Boston because he struggled big time in game one and two. So this is a team where they have the capability to erupt tonight and make this game really fun and make this a series. And we talked about this in the previous series uh, in the playoffs so far. Dallas goes and wins tonight. Shit gets weird. Shit, all the pressure goes back to Boston. Now, that's not going to be easy. They're going to have to be perfect. They're going to have to damn near be, you know, 50% or better from three. They're going to have to get their spots. They're going to have to not turn over the ball. There's so many things. And they have to get off to a good start, too. You do not want to get down big on the road in this. That's when teams, you see, pack it in. And that's when, you know, Cabo starts looking a lot prettier than it does. So there's a lot of things that they have to do. But this team, the way they play offense, the way they play ISO and pick and roll and shoot the three, they can get hot and make it trouble troublesome tonight for Boston. All right, Lou. So that was the game for winner. But the game for a loser in the Boston Celtics, this was not just a loss. This was change the channel bad. Uh, bad game, a sign of something. Like I, I don't know how to read a score like that from a team that is supposed to be the champion here in the next couple of days. Yeah, for me, it looked like they, they expected Dallas to give it to them. They, they kind of got caught up in being up 3-0, thought that Dallas had, had surrendered, and they didn't. Dallas played one of their better games um, in the postseason and in this finals, and they put a lot of pressure on, on, on Boston from the beginning. Boston kind of looked disheveled. They looked like they weren't, weren't really motivated to go ahead and finish that thing, and, and by the time they wanted to make it a game, I think Dallas was already flowing and rolling, and you know that third quarter came around, and they put their foots down, put their foot on their necks, and made them guys uh, take this thing back to Boston. So I chalked this up as a bad game, a bad, uh, just a bad run down in, down, in, down in Dallas, but I think they close it here at home tonight. And you know what's interesting? It's, it's almost like this game was so bad, it's good, because they got off their feet. They didn't play a lot of minutes. I mean, this game was over in the third quarter. Um, so this wasn't the worst thing that can happen. It is interesting to think that they're probably going to be the champs tonight. And they, two games ago, they got their ass beat by 40, which same thing <laughs> happened in NHL. I don't know if you guys watch hockey, but Florida oh, lost 8-1 yeah. to one the other day in their, in their closeout game. So it, it happens. This is a game, if you're Boston, you flush it, you kind of clean up some little things. But... This, it, I don't think this is leaving a bad taste in their mouth going forward. They know that there's bigger goals. This team has to beat them four times, and that was just one ugly time. But, yeah, this that game was an ass whooping. It was it, it was over quick. Should count as two wins if you really think about it. Um, Jason Tatum. So he, this will be the storyline, right, especially depending on what he does tonight. But he's minus 33 in game four. That's, that's according to my numbers, not great. Um, and this is probably why he continues to get criticism from parts of – this business so does he need a big game tonight him individually Chandler for everyone to just shut up or would it even be enough at this point he needs a win tonight and he won the finals 4-1 and he's an NBA champion I think that's all that matters and again I think he'll correct some things he did wrong and moving forward I think the struggles he's had with his efficiency in this playoffs I think it's going to do him wonders just because even still, he hasn't changed the way he's playing. He still takes these tough shots. He still takes these cont contested long threes and sidestep two. So it's not like he's really adapting or changing what he's doing. He's he's staying consistent with the work he puts in. And most of the time, his shots are falling. They're just not, for whatever reason, this series. So, no, I, I don't think – I think if they're going to go on to win tonight. Jalen Brown's going to probably win, uh, you know, MVP, and there he's going to get his flowers. But, no, at the end of the day – it's going to be more about the Celtics. Did they get over the hump to win a championship? Did they, was this one of the best starting fives ever? I think an, an idiot would talk about how bad Jason Tatum was in a 4-1 ass whooping in the finals. So I don't think it matters at all. I'm sure he would like to play better more than we would like him to play better. But no, sure. I think the way you shut up critics is by winning a championship tonight. 
I'm just, I'm still confused about the criticism and the critics. We keep saying Luka Doncic is the best player in this series, but we are finding ways to still criticize Jason Tatum, who has a very convincing 3-1 lead. Yes, they lost by 38 points in game four, but other than that, this has been a dominant, dominant series for the Boston Celtics. And if he hasn't been the best player, which has been Jalen Brown, he's been a second best player. He's been a, he's been a best playmaker they've made. He started doing things. He's starting to unlock parts of his game that we didn't even really know he, he had. We didn't know he was that type of playmaker. We didn't know that he liked to get in there and get dirty and go and get nine or ten rebounds for you. These are things that he's brought to the table, and that's winning basketball. That's a winning attitude. I'm not as efficient as I want to be scoring a basketball, but I'm going to impact this game positively. He's done that this entire series. I, don't, I, don't, I still don't understand how we're trying to find something to criticize this guy about when he still has a very commanding 3-1 lead with his basketball team. So then let me ask you this, Lou, because, you know, there's already been the start of all the dynasty talk. Like, this will be one of many rings for this particular iteration of the Celtics. And then they lose by 38. Does that do anything to sort of change the trajectory of what you think this Boston team will do in the next several years? No. No, I mean, they have first. Well, first things first, they got to finish this one. They got to finish sure. their breakfast on, on this series and get their first ring. For them to, to even be considered a dynasty, you have to get inside the door of, the, of that special ring of teams. So they got to go out and win this game. Who cares if they want, lost by 38? Whether they lost by three, whether they lost by 38, they're still up 3-1. It's basketball. They've been blowing the, the Dallas Mavericks out. They've had blowout wins on the other side. The one game that they've lost, they lost big. I give I give Dallas credit for that. Other than that, let's let's not get it. Let's not get caught up in where we are in this series. Can we say it's a new series, this and that? Sure, but everybody and their moms think that this thing is still over tonight. <laughs> they still think it's a tall task for the Dallas Mavericks. So, with all is said and done, did we expect a sweep? We expected a sweep based on how dominant they were in the first three games. Them getting blown out changes nothing for me. Yeah, also, uh, the word dynasty, like uh, Chicago Bulls, Golden State Warriors, Kansas City Chiefs, like dynasty means a di like yeah. multiple championships and they dominance. They got to get in the door first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah let's, let's let them win their first one before we start throwing that D word around. I, I agree, and I'm glad you added word to that. Um, Shams, let me ask you something. Kristaps Porzingis was technically active, although I'm imagining that was so he could be in the pictures with his uniform on when the sweep was completed. Do we expect him to do anything in this game tonight? Well, r right before game four, what I was told is that they would only utilize Kristaps Porzingis in situational uh, appearances, right? When you're guarding the inbound, if you need to shoot a free throw, we need to defend the rim on a lob threat, potentially with, you know, 0. .3, whatever seconds left. Hmm. on a possession uh i would expect the same here in game five as far as him dressing and being available you saw some of his teammates come on and say how much he wants to play how bad he's working but he's just not there from a physical perspective so obviously a, a very unique injury definitely the first of its kind on the nba level um but christos Porzingis has been trying hard to get back on the floor uh, but I, you know the expectation around the celtics at, at least he's going to play a similar role that he did in game uh four so he's ready, Chandler. Do you think there's a, I don't even know if panic is the right word, but a slight sort of desperation, like we maybe we do need him to finish this thing up? No, I, I don't think so. I think that would be a huge luxury because we could see the impact he makes like he did in game one. But uh, and, and it's all really tolerance, I think, with this injury. I wasn't super familiar with the injury, but if this is something that's not going to get worse, that he's going to have surgically repaired anyways in a couple of weeks when this series is over, then yeah, let him let him go out there and let him rip. You can see how these these highlights alone, he creates so many mismatches with the way Dallas guards, with the way they switch pick and roll, which way he can get to that off the block post up and just shoot right over these smaller guards. So yeah, would that be a real luxury to have him in the lineup tonight? Uh, even something small like that, like a free throw or using his length to guard a free throw, uh, an inbounds pass. Yeah, sure. But I think I think, and we all think that Boston Celtics have enough to at least win one of these next three games without KP. Just need one, Lou. You just need one. Speaking of, Lou, who wins tonight? <laughs> Boston wins. <laughs> okay. All right. Chandler, you agree? Uh, yeah, that, that's yeah, it. Yeah, and as much as I want it to be a close series and this to keep going, I just – I thought the game – honestly, I was wrong about game four. I, once they lost game three, I thought it was going to be a sweep. I thought game three Same. was going to be the one to get. But, yeah, I think, I think Boston shuts that door tonight. Call it. It's over. I, We're I would done love to be tonight. entertained, though. 
I know. Exactly. <laughs> like, I don't mind if Boston wins, and we, but it would, I would like for the game to actually be, you know, a point or two difference. Um, Shams, boy, did we get some scoop over the weekend. It's the 2024 scoop because it's all social media, and I love it so much. Over the weekend, Clay Thompson unfollows the Warriors. Dun, dun, dun. What's going on? I don't know about the unfollowing aspect, but this is something we've been talking about for months. For the first time in his career, really, Clay Thompson, I'm told, is open to all external options in free agency coming up. He intends to test free agency. We know the Warriors want him back. They offered him an extension before the start of the season. They're going to see if there can be a deal that gets done, but he's going to be there in the marketplace seeking offers elsewhere. Couldn't Orlando step up? What team out there could step up for Clay Thompson? That is going to be the big question, but the Warriors will stay in touch with him and see exactly where he's going to end up going. If he does leave the Warriors, that call with Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Steve Curry, that's going to be the, the most difficult call Klay Thompson's made possibly ever. Oh, it's like a, it's like a sad breakup. By the way, he to... also allegedly <laughs> followed Paolo Bancaro over the weekend. Yeah. I mean... Let me tell you something, Michelle. As stupid as this whole topic is and how crazy social media is, uh, and I hate it. This is definitely something. You don't just unfollow your team. You don't just accidentally do, you know what I mean? You weren't hacked. Like, th this was, this <laughs> is something where if you unfollow, and again, this is so wild that we're talking about this, that this is a story, but this is the world we live in. <laughs> There's something here. And I, I definitely think they're, 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 he's up to something. You don't just unfollow the Warriors and follow Paolo, the best player on the team, that there's rumors that you're going to go to and get a big offer from this summer. So, this is definitely interesting. You don't just do this for, and Clay Thompson doesn't just do this for clicks. Like there's clearly right. some sort of animosity or anger or some sort of disconnect here where where this is happening. And then deleting the pictures of him and Steph and That's... winning the championship. Like this is almost like you're you're deleting your past with your ex-girlfriend and you're starting fresh and you're moving on. So as little as it is, it's, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. It's kind of crazy. Look at Lou. Lou, here, because I'm a big believer in when I don't like someone anymore, I usually just mute them because I don't want to give them the satisfaction. If I unfollow like, oh, you, if I unfollow you, I hate you. Like, I, then I, that's I, what I'm I, saying. Like, there's a big unfollowing difference. Unfollowing is like uh, you're I'm, dead to me. Right. I'm a little, I'm a little different. It's listen. I'm, I'm still wired as a player. I, I'm still getting my feet wet in the media game, but I, and I know. But I don't think this is a, I don't think this is a big deal. See, I'm, I'm different when it comes to social media. If I'm, if I'm not entertained anymore and your page is kind of boring and you don't post as much and you don't do anything, I'm going to unfollow you. It's not that, it's not that deep to me. It's not like a, a Lou message I'm trying to send will. or anything. I'm Lou. just, I'm going to, I'm just going to find other pages. I'm just going to find other pages to follow. And also, let me ask, <laughs> Chandler, let me ask you this. Vita, let me ask you this. Who gives a fuck about Clay Thompson's Instagram? <laughs> Like, I none do. of us follow Clay. I it ain't like we go to his page every day. Somebody had to tell all of us that Clay Thompson oh, yeah. unfollowed the Warriors. <laughs> none of us. Oh, no, there's I, a whole account that just us, watches. That's his boy. Like, no. <laughs> no, no, there's an that's entire just, account. That's just me do personally. You guys, Chandler, I, I do you follow? There's, a, there's an account that just watches NBA players following and unfollowing. That's Not only do I think. follow him, right, he still so follows me, not the Warriors. <laughs> Look at Chandler. Me? Be careful, Chandler. Be careful. Be careful, Chandler. Be careful. No, he doesn't hate me. He didn't just <laughs> randomly unfollow me this weekend, Lou. I'm just saying. That means that means your page is still interesting yeah. to him. I love but this. Also, listen. Yeah, your page might still be. Your page <laughs> might still be. This. And it's also and it's also leverage, Chandler. It's also That's leverage. What I was listen, say. I'm going in the free was... agency. I'm, ding, ding. Yeah, I'm a I'm a clear I'm a clear my I'm a clear my slate. And let's let's start from the beginning. Despite everything that we've been through, everything we've accomplished together, I'm hearing the rumbles about you guys not wanting to pay me, maybe not bringing me back. Okay, so let me get on the same page with y'all. Let's unfollow each other. Let's start from the beginning. And this is business. It's not personal. No. If you saw me unfollow you right now, wouldn't you not be like, what the fuck? Or like, <laughs> let's say you saw, like, wouldn't you be a little like caught off guard? Like, damn, like, like yeah. what I do? No, I just unfollow you back. I don't know. Oh, it just depends on. on my mood and how it swings, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't what know. What is wrong with you? No, I'm telling you, that's just how I coming. am. That is how I'm wired. Sometimes I care, sometimes I don't. That's how this? I am. There's also so many people I want to unfollow, but I'm so uncomfortable and awkward that I'm never going to see them again that I don't Mute unfollow them. them. Oh. He, doesn't even, he doesn't even give see? a shit. You need, more, you need more Lou Will in your system. 
You need you more Lou Williams system. Just unfollow him. Just it's mute cool. him. Just unfollow him. Just mute him. Can I give you guys an example, though, when this has worked? Because Kyler Murray, before he got that gigantic <laughs> contract, went through this process. He unfollowed the Cardinals. He basically removed anything Arizona-related from his bio, pictures, whatever. And then he got a monster, monster deal. So I, it's also, been done in sports. Also, Lou, times. deleting, like, whatever, leaving free agency, do his, deleting the picture of him and Steph that's, winning a championship, that's, that's still, like, a history. That's still legacy. That's more like than just... Friend. I'll give that's you that. More. Now, that's I'll like, give you that. Damn, you're just now, erasing yeah, I'll give our you entire now, run? Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. That's Now, that's that's different because Clay and Steph, they have a, a, a separate relationship outside of the Golden State Warriors. I, I'll give you that. But as far as your team shit, I don't know if I've ever followed a team that I've played for anyways. I have followed every single team while I was playing, and then when I left, I unfollowed them. That's fair. That is fair. I just love the idea of Shams having to go out there now and just look at Instagram and figure out who's unfollowing. That just is not a good off-season start. Let's play for a Shams. game for the whole off-season where we just keep unfollowing each other and see who notices. Because see see I will be upset. I'll be sensitive about it. I'm not even going to lie. Um, Michelle, you're the first one I'm unfollowing for sure. And then I'm, I'm literally going to unfollow you and block you on everything. Um, we got we to take about to a say quick it's, break. It's, it gets real when somebody gets blocked. It's blocking is a whole other thing. By the way, you know who's going to have answers for us on the social media? Bobby Portis. Bobby friggin' Portis is going to tell us what's going on with the unfollow and follow when Run It Back returns. Oh, balloons! Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, and run it back, run it back, run it up. You know why I'm here, yeah, you know what I came to do. If it's you against me, no, I ain't going to lose. Bobby Portis, he is a competitor. Nothing but that's a Bobby. You know why I'm here, Oh, he's back. Bobby Portis is here. Uh, good morning, kind sir. Um, dude, we have to just start where we left off in the last segment because it turned into a heated battle between Chandler and Lou about following and unfollowing. And the whole story this weekend was Clay Thompson, which is hilarious to say out loud as an adult, unfollowed the Warriors and also erased a few uh, championship pictures with Steph. Do you think there is something to that? It's not coincidence, right? Uh... I'm following the Warriors. I mean, I'm I'm biased, man. I I don't look too much into the unfollowing thing for real, for real, man. Like, if you don't follow me, then I just unfollow you type stuff. Like, like it's nothing serious about it. Like when I see you in person, I'm still gonna holler at you. What's up, man? We good, but <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm not gonna like make too much of it. But in in this instance, like I just think it's you know it's him him trying to just um have leverage you know you know unfollow um i think someone else did it as well throughout the sports you know feel I, I forgot which athlete did it but uh oh yeah you know, it's happened um you know i think guys do that all the time delete pictures of you know old things um have zero pictures and then you know sign a big deal afterwards so uh you know i guess it's, that's that's his tactic of uh you know having his leverage Okay, did you did you unfollow you Giannis at one point? <laughs> nah, I ain't never unfollowed Giannis. Uh, I might unfollow some people that you know might not be posting as much, or they don't post nothing on their right. page, and I I I I I'll unfollow them then. But I'm just not just going to my following and just looking down and say, oh, okay, it's time for me to unfollow you. <laughs> uh, you know, like I, I, I'm not doing that. <laughs> See, Lou, that was your sort of thing. Like, maybe you're just boring I, me now, and I don't really want to I follow you. Yeah, like, for real, <laughs> yeah, for real, though. Like, yeah, like, maybe listen, especially when you got a when you got a page that got a lot going on, and your page is popping, and you don't want to just follow a lot of people unnecessarily. Every once in a while, you got to clean that storage out. You got to clean your garage yeah. up a little bit. So if your page bored, you ain't posted in a few <laughs> months. Obviously, you're not here. You're not locked in. So I'm gonna unfollow. I'm out of here. And also, if I'm Clay Thompson, before they allow me to walk to the Orlando Magic or somewhere else, I'm gonna beat you to the punch. I'm gonna unfollow you first. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No big deal. I'm gonna get you before you get me. Again. I'm gonna get See? You. Yeah, there's stuff no big to deal. it. What a time to be alive. This did not exist 15 years ago. Um, all right, so so Bobby, we know the whole thing. You're down 3 nothing, 156 and 0. It just doesn't work. That people don't come back from that. The Mavericks do, however, have the one win now under their belts as they go into Boston tonight to do it again. Was there anything from that game or from this Dallas team that you could see maybe they could be the one to make history? 
Nah. Uh, unfortunately, man, uh, you know, you're playing in Boston tonight. It's going to be hostile in there. Uh, you know, they they looking for Banner 18. So uh, I think my realistic opinion of it is Boston about to get on their ass tonight. Uh, they finna do it to them, man. Um, Built to ass, man. Shout out, shout out, shout out Pat Bill, man. Built to ass, man. Shout they, out they, they on yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are they on there tonight, man. Yeah, hey, 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 this this series over with tonight, man. I hope that this um, you know, so ends up well of a you know prediction for me. I've seen guys predict things and did not come out too well, but um, yeah, I think it's over with tonight. NBA season coming to an end, and our focus going to the draft as it is. Hmm. BP, your 2021 Bucks team, you guys went down 2-0, so it wasn't exactly 3-0, but then you guys won four in a row. Obviously, won that championship that year. Uh, a few years ago here, what was the biggest mindset change that happened? Well, what what to you is, is the frame of mind that you have in order to come back from a series in, in that type of a deficit? I'm not even going to lie. So East Coast teams and, like, West Coast teams play, like, two entirely different styles of ball. Like, we are uh, half court, get into the flow, uh, get into the stars, guys play off them type stuff. Uh, West Coast up and down high tempo, it, on miss or mates, they running it right back at you. So I remember like game one, we got like blown out. We like, okay, this is game one. The game two come around, we hanging around, then they pulled off again. And I remember getting on the plane, man. We sit on the plane, like most of the time we play cards, you know, we play cards, play bourree, everybody gumbo, we having a good time. We got the music on, it, it, it ain't no music playing, it ain't no cards being playing. We just sitting there looking at each other like, bro, what the hell just happened? <laughs> like, like there's no way that we thought when we got on the plane going to Phoenix that we was going to be come back, going back to Milwaukee 02. And we was just like, shoot, man, we got to lock in, man. The biggest thing in the playoffs is just protect the home court. So our biggest mindset was, okay, let's get these two at home and then let's see what game five going to do. Uh, that year, that year in particular in the playoffs, we was real hot at home, man. I think we lost one game that whole playoff run at home. So, uh, it, it was it was fun, man. But I think our turn of mind was just getting the two at home and then going back game five and um, trying to steal one there and just ending it at the crib for game six. We know at home, man, it's tough beating us. I got to ask you about uh, the Jason Kidd stuff before game one. It's like, you know, he he knows what he's doing. He knows that all the yeah, sports yeah, talk yeah, media, yeah. all we do is Tatum versus Brown. Who's better, this, that, and the other. And then he goes ahead and puts that little seed out there for them. But you've played both of them. So do you worry about one guy over the other when you're facing them? Nah, uh, I think we, I think most of the time, man, we just try to protect the three-point line, man. I think when Boston making threes, when they moving it into the flow, when they breaking down one-on-one, -on -one, and then you have to help a lot, I think that's where they generate a lot of their points from. So I think with our team, we just try to stay home, man, just let them play one-on-one. -on -one. And if they score 40, 30, 40, 50, man, like how many points can they score to beat us? Like that's our mindset going to the game. I don't think we just worried about Tatum and Brown more so than the team, man. I think when they hit a lot of threes, they get the ball moving and swing, swing actions. They tough to beat, man, when they make a 15 plus three. So um, our biggest thing is just protecting the three-point line, making them shoot tough twos and living with those. So. Uh, I think that's our mindset going into every time we play them. <clears throat> Bob, you know, uh, usually the finals MVP goes to the winning side. And right now with the Celtics being up 3-1, it'll probably um, swing their way. And they've had a few guys be very impactful um, for them in very different ways. Who's your finals MVP so far, if you had to call it? Drew Holiday. Hmm. Shout out Drew Holiday. Drew, man. It'll, it'll <laughs> If Drew aren't on the team, they don't, they, don't, they don't win no championship this year. Drew just different, man. He unlocks guys. Uh, he raises guys' awareness on defense. Like, when you play with him, he just makes you lock in in a different way. Uh, you know, just being his teammate for three years, man, it was just a different type of feel when you got him out there. You just feel, like, you know, so safe with him on the court. So he definitely made them different. He definitely unlocked them in a different way. And... Uh, I'm definitely be hating from a side for sure when he win show tonight. <laughs> Bobby, so you guys get Dame Miller, but Drew Holiday gets traded to the to the Blazers, and then somehow he ends up getting traded 
to your rival with the Celtics as a teammate. Is the regret losing Drew Holiday, especially to the rivals uh, in the Celtics? Like, how much how, how how much regret do you guys feel as teammates losing Drew Holiday? Um, I'm not gonna say regret because like Damian Lillard is like an all world talent, all world player. Um, uh, so we got a great a great get in him, and obviously it's our it's our first you know just rodeo together with each other. You know, we had a, a lot going on this season, man. We had two coaches. We had, you know, you know, we went to Vegas, you know, we played the in-season tournament. We had highs and lows. We had super injuries this year. I feel like we never played with our full team throughout the whole season. So we had a lot going on and throughout the NBA season, it kind of needs to be smooth and you kind of need to be healthy to win. The healthiest team always wins each and every year. I think I tweeted that a couple of weeks ago. Like, does the best team win on every year? Or does the most healthiest team win? But uh, definitely, man, uh, losing Drew and watching him play uh, for another team, especially the Celtics. I remember, like, when we first traded him, I was like, man, I just hope, I, I don't care, wherever he go, man, I hope he just don't go to the Celtics. And <laughs> I swear, like, 48 hours later, I seen Drew Holiday has been traded to the Celtics. <clears throat> You and I'm did like, this. oh man, this is crazy. <laughs> like now we gotta play against some there, and I and I really like you, Drew. But now I really kind of, you know, don't like you when I play against you no more, bro. Damn. That is that is. T- I mean, of all the teams that he could have ended the up teams, back man. <laughs> all the teams, twenty eight more teams he could have went to, man. You know, Mm-mm. but it's nope. all good. They they figured that one out. That, so I have to ask you because the, everyone's you know this this Celtics team is this that and the other and they they may win three or four rings in the next coming future. Um, and you guys are obviously somebody they're going to have to get through when you look at the East. So do you see this Boston team moving forward as oh crap this is who we're going to have to face for the next three or four years? If you guys are healthy, are you beating them? Man, I'm gonna tell you like this, man. Uh, you know. Every championship team has a little luck along the way. Um, I think every season, I think that's always like a big question mark. Like, oh, this team didn't play such and such because such and such was hurt. Um, I know like our championship year, they always question us. Like, oh, if Kyrie didn't get hurt, would they beat the Nets? Like, that's always a big question mark every season for every team that makes it all the way. So, uh, you know, I think they got a few question marks as well, man. You know, first round, no Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy tough in the playoff. I think the whole world know that playoff Jimmy. I experienced it last year. So, uh, and then the Donovan Mitchell, second round, Tyrese Holly Bird. So, I don't, I don't know, man. Um, I can't say that, you know, they're the team to beat or the dynasty because, you know, there's other great teams coming along and, you know, we're going to be right back in the fold next year as well, as um, long as we're healthy. So um, I like our chances against anybody, as long as, you know, we got our full, you know, stable of guys. Um, it's tough winning in this league without your full unit. BP, you said, uh, you tweeted that you're back in the lab already. What's what's some of the things that you're trying to tighten up on and what you put new in that bag? What you're trying to add to the to your game? If you need that fadeaway, I got it bro. for you. Come on down, ATL. I put that fadeaway. I'm working fade on my there. flopping, man. I'm working on my flopping, man. I've been saying, I'm working on my flopping this year. Man. No, I'm working on my going Nelson. They bumped me. Hey! Nah, you're working on that for real. Like Lou, you're really, really working, working on, on my going Nelson. Hey! Yeah. But not for real, help? for real, though. Just, you might, hey, look, just you might need, up. They might not give you the flops, bro. You too, you too big for the flops. They might not give them. You see, it don't work for Bron. Bron try to throw it in his bag. It don't work for him like that. The big know, guys, man. it don't go. I don't know, man. I've been seeing a lot of flopping going on, man. And fun, man. They, they calling it now, Lou. They, they, they call. Uh, they, hey, hey, bro. They calling it now, man. So you just gotta, you know, so you gotta sell it. They you know, get you gotta, away Hey, with hey. The acting. They get away with it. Yeah, I you get the, look, act. I give the refs well. credit. I give the refs credit. They hadn't been very much a part of this finals, man. We had we hadn't had a lot of controversy when it comes to the referees. Nah. So as much nah. as I much mean, shit as we give them, let's give them some credit, man. Fair. They've been doing, doing a solid job. But granted, Boston been doing their thing too. So like the refs really haven't had a chance to really get involved for real, because you know they've been built the ass on the mouths. <laughs> for, for real, for real. Like, they have been known them, though, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, like, if Luca is quiet, then they really don't have 
so much anger like they probably had in game three. I want to ask you about the two small, only because I'm fascinated by sort of shit talking and when it's chosen to do it. We've seen you give it to a few guys uh, over the course of the seasons. Um, do you know before a game, like, hey, so and so's on that team? Shut up, Lou. Uh, so and so's on that team. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna do it to him. What do you What are you thinking? Yeah, there. Okay. Yep. There it is. A double. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Like, look at fat. That's funny. Hey. Hey, both of us did it right there. That was funny. That was I'm like not a even gonna one. lie. Like, <laughs> like, like, so in the game, like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, me right now versus who I am when I get into the game, like, it's two entirely different people. Like, I ain't not even gonna lie. Like, sometimes I can't believe some of the stuff I say in the game. And then after the game, I'm like, damn, I really said that. Like, like crazy. Like, so. I don't really go into the game like, oh, okay, if I score on somebody, I'm going to tell him he's too small. It's like more in the moment because, you know, it's a game within the game sometimes. Like, you know, you might have this subtle, you know, shit-talking moment with somebody throughout the game. And then, like, once you get your lick back, you know, you, you know what I'm saying, you let him know about it. He might let you know about it. Like, you know, just basketball. Like, that's how basketball is supposed to be played. Like, with a little energy, with a little fire and a little passion. So... Um, and, you know, it's just, you know, it's fun for the fans as well, like, you know, just to get some entertainment and for us to go out there and have fun, do what we do here at night. I love it. For sure. No, thank you, Bobby. We've loved having you on. I hope you have a great off season. We'll talk to you again sure. next year. That's yeah. crazy to say already. So have a good one, man. Thank you. Belt BP, tonight, appreciate man. it, Belt sir. Appreciate Belt it, Belt ass tonight. <laughs> Much love, BP. <laughs> yes, we'll be back. Run it back, run it back, run it back, run it back. Run it back, FanDuel TV. I want to say uh, you guys have a, have a great, great show to start. So this ain't the first time I've gone viral with you. Let's go. Luca's already better than Larry Bird was. And maybe they made a mistake by letting Darvin Ham go. Damn. Donovan Mitchell, you got what you wanted, so now all the pressure is on you. The fans are like, oh, it'd be different if Jamal Murray was playing. It's like, no. You're going to stay here and finish getting your ass whooped. She's making more money than you, so keep hating. She's changing the game. She is awesome. She deserves it. Don't get it twisted. They do not like Porzingis in Dallas. No, Luca not did not me. like playing with him. There is an actual beef there. I'm six here we go. You I, fold it. I can't just, you can't just throw it up like a lob. No, bro. Post up. Hell no. You can't play in the NFL. I'm a dream killer. <laughs> you can look at the Kings as like a trade destination. Shams, you ever been to Sacramento, Shams? Oh. Oh, I knew it was coming. LeBron James is not involved in the Lakers head coaching surge, but they're going to get Joel Embiid back very soon. The mindset in Golden State right now is everyone but Steph Curry is <laughs> on the table. Ronnie James is declaring for the 2024 NBA draft. They turned their attention, I'm told, to Dan Hurley, and he was not the number one candidate, the number one guy to go pursue. Talk to me about being down 3 0, um, mindset wise. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't know. Is there a better way to start that? There's such a jab. There's something about being down. So you would agree that the Embiid foul on Mitchell Robinson was dirty? Hey, man. I ain't trying to get fined. I thought Space Jam was supposed to be a good movie. Was I wrong? Yes. What? Do I not remember? Space Jam is terrible. Space Jam is terrible. He deserves every MVP vote. And if you don't vote for him, I'm going to kick your ass. Is it true that Giannis pinched you during a game? Yeah, yes. Right here? Right here? Right here. Uh, Nobody's beat Vincent Carter to death. No, like, is there someone out there we're not it's thinking of? Nobody. No, nobody would those be guys, I, I would love to, to compete against all of the, the greats and, 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 and put it to the test. I yeah, mean, just, just to beat them. What's the better story? All these guys hate each other or? Yeah, they're great guys. They all get along. They just didn't win. <laughs> Did you see any any situations where there was a disconnect? Honestly, yeah, man. I I I kind of I kind of seen it. The narrative was, oh, he quit on the team. Like them said, Rick doesn't want to coach you with Donnie Nelson on the phone. Okay, I don't want to play for Rick. Hey, Lou, I ain't gonna lie. If you came out of retirement, I'm looking for you. <laughs> Got on all fours and barked at me in the playoff game. Said, Dude, crazy. Have you been on a court that was stormed? Yes. Just don't lose. You can't never say no about playing home, especially for playing, you know, for a historic team like the Lakers. To be honest, it was 500K, you know, Brown, you know, he's got all that money. At some point in time, you're going to have a Will Chamberlain type of season. I think that's what you're going to get from women young. What? I got to my mama out. I got to check my mama out. <laughs> we're we're going we to keep a respectful mama. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's Damian it. Lillard does not get a statue Ooh. in Portland. Is he the greatest Mav of all time already? 
It's gotta be. Yeah, right? Dirk, yeah, Dirk is gonna disagree with me, but he is. What kind of bag are we talking to drop to get you to leave A and M and go to one of those schools? Probably the same contract you got in Memphis. <laughs> That's gonna do it for us. Oh, enjoy the games. <laughs> God, I forgot we had like all those people on the show, you guys. Yeah. Do you have a favorite moment? Mm, man, that was <laughs> I was a little emotional there watching that. I like that. You know what? GG Jackson. I am gonna I might order a jersey for next year with all my beef with Memphis. I am pulling I for that kid. He's probably my favorite interview that we did all season long. How about that? How about the kid from Memphis is the one that Chandler remembers them? I mean, the, the world works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Love him. Love him. Sh Shams, did you have a moment that you loved? Oh, my God. I mean, so many great interviews. I mean, we had literally every category of, of person in the league on. We, we had owner. We had GM. We had players. We had star players. We had mid-tier players, bench players. So I just want to shout out all of us. I want to shout out the producers, the bookers, everyone. <laughs> For, for having the best of the best on running back. Shout out, Lou. That was fun. You know what? My, my, my new favorite is you asking Larry Nance about being down 3-0 <laughs> with a straight face and thought that he was going to be cool with that. That's probably one of my new favorites. <laughs> it's been a very long season. We've experienced a lot, and every day was a, was a, was a learning experience and was fun to me, but, but that's my new favorite, you asking him I that mean... with a straight face. In my defense, uh, sometimes I don't want the question to be too wordy because who wants to hear me talk? So I try to shorten things a lot of the time. And when I shortened that <laughs> particular question, it came out pretty callous. You guys did not help, by the way. You egged the whole thing on. So it, to be fair, my my like my thing well, is learning a, and. Oh, wow. What? Live, there, live TV here. Is there a doggy or a kid? There you go, Beetle. Oh! <laughs> it looked like a doll. Um, Lou, knowing that Lou does not believe any of the Wilt Chamberlain numbers will, sti will stick with me for the rest of my days. And, like, stands by it. And also now the dinosaur thing. There's a lot going on with Lou Will, you, know you guys. I have another moment. Another moment that stands out to me was when, when I said I was going to a game and Chandler said, are you going to find a girlfriend at a game? I think that's what he said. Like, I'm like, bro, he did. what? That I, I said, love what are you how, looking for? I love for? how random our show is sometimes. <laughs> No one else oh, good, would we, do this. We have another segment left before we call this thing uh, over for season two. So we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap things up. Hi, Bobby. It's like a poof. <laughs> we'll be back. Run it back. Run it over. 45 seconds to go, Shams. You want to make our case? Well, Michelle, <laughs> you know, I just heard, I just heard Conrad our producer, one of our producers, I heard he has a shipment of like uh, at least ten to fifteen thousand dollars of merchandise for Run It Back Ooh. season three. So uh, yeah. it sounds like we're 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 really gonna be using Conrad, all of Conrad's money. This is not on the Fanduel card. This is all on Conrad's card. Oh no! I oh, hope Conrad's oh. not out fifteen grand, oh, no. <laughs> guys. It has been an absolute pleasure, Lou. You've been an amazing addition to the show. Uh, I cannot wait to do this. Again, and thanks to everyone behind See the scenes. See y'all soon, guys you hear? The whole time. Run it back, run it back, run it back.